Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we're going to talk about getting depraved uh, with the excess of gravity for the Hedonites of Slanesh. This is actually a re-record of this video. I screwed up a couple of roll, uh, rules in the first one. So I wanted to redo it and actually have, like, correct rules out there uh, instead of looking silly and being wrong. Um, I personally really like this mechanic. It was recently uh, changed in the recent uh, FAQ and errata to be, I think, substantially better than what it was before. So um, let's uh, jump into this. All right. So at the beginning of each battle round, after you determine the turn order, you can give your opponent zero to three depravity dice. Um, also worth noting the way that this is currently worded, you can actually do this any number of times. So you can give them like nine depravity dice if you want to, because um, it doesn't have like once per battle round per player or something like that. Um, but that's probably not what's actually intended. Um, so your opponent, when they have their depravity dice, they can use that to replace one uh, wound, save, ward, or run roll. So after making the roll, they failed it, they can use a depravity die for that. And then the same with charges, but you, can, you have to use two depravity dice on a charge. Uh, and that's including counter charge abilities. So um, both of these are happening after the initial roll. That's something that I actually got wrong in the original video. Um, that actually does change the math on this. This is kind of like slightly better than a re-roll. Well, a little bit better than, yeah, I'm arguably better than a re-roll in most circumstances. Um, so. They don't just, you know, get a six. What you do, they roll their dice for the depravity dice. On a three plus, the roll counts as a six. On a one or a two, it counts as the one or the two that was rolled and inflicts D3 mortal damage on the unit that you're rolling for uh, with no wards allowed. Which is uh, kind of a big penalty. Um, for uh you know say trying to re-roll a wound roll oops i then take d3 mortals for trying to re-roll something fail it again and uh also uh take d3 mortals so um important things to note here what is not on the list of things that this can be used for cannot be used for spells cannot be used for prayers cannot be used on rolls to hit so, in other words, you can't use Depravity Dice to trigger crits. Very, very powerful. Um, or important, rather. Yeah, very important. So, um, that means you have some limited uh, power on this other than um, you know, being, being able to have that uh, charge roll potentially become a 12. Um, but we're going to talk about the math on all of that in a minute. So what do you get in exchange for giving your opponent these uh, special abilities? Well, for each die that you roll, one uh, becomes uh, euphoric uh, uh, un until the end of the battle round. That unit gains crit two hits. And it can run and shoot and run and charge. Um, then your unlimited spell in the army also uh, changes that crit two hits to crit mortals. So this is really uh, improving your damage output on units and your speed quite a bit. Um, and then that damage output uh, going to mortals instead of two hits uh, really can... Uh, substantially uh, boost up your uh, damage profile. A lot of your uh, units in this army really are more high volume attacks with um, one damage. 
rather than low volume attacks with multi damage, um, which actually also makes the whole like uh, re rolling a save thing even better for you. Like, you know, unless, uh, you know, they're, they're going to probably try and get that uh, depravity save for your Keeper of Secrets or something like that. But other than that, you're looking at mostly one wound guy, or uh, one damage guys. So, um, it, just the quick math hammer off the top is that when your opponent tries to use a depravity die on wound save, ward, or run, they are, they got a one third chance to blow that and take D3 rolls. Um, otherwise, you get a six. On saves and wards, there are a handful of abilities that will trigger on a roll of a six. Um, there isn't anything on runs, and I don't know if there's any on wounds. There might be a couple. But in general, like you're not triggering crit abilities or crit-like abilities by doing this. Um, so those, I think, are important to note. All right, so let's talk about the math on charges, because the charge is really the most powerful thing that you can do with this. Um, it really kind of almost feels like you should just only give your opponent one depravity die per turn at the most, and then uh, just hope you can maximize uh, with that uh, crit two hits. So... The problem is when you are rolling 2d6, your odds of a 1 or a 2 are 55.6%. So more than half the time, you're going to fail one of those dice. And you have an 11% chance of a double fail, which is pretty low, but 1 in 10 is still like, it's going to probably happen like once per game if your opponent is often using this ability. Um, so the most reliable thing you can really do with this is using it on a charge of a seven. That way, if you roll one of your depravity dice um, being a fail, like a one or a two, then you still make the other die a six. And so you have about 90% probability of a successful seven. Now, a seven with a reroll is 82%. So it's already very good odds on a seven with a reroll. Um, using the depravity instead of a reroll makes it practically a guarantee that you'll get it. Um, and then uh, on an eight, you do have slightly less odds. The seven is important because it doesn't matter if you roll a one or a two on that second die. The other one always becomes a six. So you always have a seven or an eight out of um, when you have one die fail and the other succeed. Um, so the eight slightly less because you can't make an eight with a roll of a one on a die. For a 9 plus, um, all of your odds end up being the same because um, you can't uh, roll a 9 or better on 2d6 with a roll of a 1 or a 2. So all of those effectively become 12s, and you've got a 44% chance of that success on a 9 plus. Your odds of 9 plus ordinarily are. Um, 27.8%, so uh, slightly better than uh, a quarter of the time. Your odds when you re-roll it, 47.9%, so it, it becomes like roughly a coin flip, a little bit worse. Um, now, if you do 9 plus with a depravity die, it becomes 59.9%, so you're still failing 40% of the time even when you are you know, factoring in that you roll for the charge first on a nine. Um, and then that 
like compounded odds with the depravity just goes down further for 10, 11, 12. So uh, hitting a 12 is generally, I mean, it's a one in 36 chance, so it's not going to happen very often. And, you know, just with uh, <laughs> Murphy's Law being as it is, uh, it's not going to ever happen when you need it. So you, if you're looking for more than a nine, you're really going pretty close to that odds of just a 44% chance of success, which means more than half the time your depravity charge is going to fail when you are at a nine plus. So I think that is um, really, it makes this a lot better than you might think because it is very tempting to just go for those 12 inch charges. But because you have such high risk of failure and your failure means not only do you fail your charge but you're taking damage that can't be warded um it, it's it really i think actually kind of nails the flavor of the mechanic where you know you're you're offering a temptation to your opponent i will give you this opportunity to do something but you might fail and if you fail you're getting punished so it, basically how it really shakes out is using depravity dice for your opponent for one die is not going to be that impactful most of the time if your opponent uses two dice for depravity to try and make a long charge their odds of succeeding on that are actually like mathematically way worse than they look like it, when you're just not actually doing the math in your head. So it's, uh, it, it ain't great uh, for your opponent. It, you know, having your opponent get like basically a coin flip on a nine inch charge or a, a 12 inch charge that is um you know certainly better than the alternative but it's still far from a guarantee and the flip side of that you know getting that damage is certainly a deterrent um another thing that i really want to mention in this is because of that nature of it as well between it potentially being something that you screw up and uh, take damage and something that like you like stick in your pocket and then forget is there uh, these actually might not even get used as much as you might think so i think for many people that are video gamers uh and maybe this goes for other tabletop games as well there's this kind of phenomenon that happens where you know, you get items, like one-use items or really good items, and you're like, okay, I'm going to save this for later in the game when I really, really need it. And then it gets to be later in the game, and you still haven't used it, and then you get to the final boss battle, and you don't use it in the final boss battle, and then you're holding all of these items in your pockets while you watch the credits roll. And I think that's probably going to happen a lot with the Pravity Dice. Um where they're going to get down to like the end of the combat phase and you're like, all right, I guess I'm going to use it to replace a roll to wound uh, or something like that. Uh, because they were hoping to need it for something better. Um, and then it doesn't happen. All right. So how do we address this charge issue? So as I've said, it's, definitely better most of the time to use uh, two of your depravity dice for a charge than it is for other things. So the simple solution to that is if you're really worried about it, never give your opponent two or more depravity dice. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward. Um, board positioning ends up having a huge impact on this. 
and um that's kind of really the summary of like the rest of this this is really good at certain points in the game where you really need a charge and you just don't make it and you need it so you throw the depravity dice at it and like the depravity dice are better than a reroll and they don't cost you a command point sure but the difference between the reroll and the depravity roll are not as much as you might think and like in terms of the odds to make it happen and there's just not really um a lot that you can do about it at that point you can really position such that the depravity charge rolls are just not worth it for your opponent or they just can't make them uh so for example getting enemy units into combat so that they are not even eligible to charge uh just generally chaffing things being positioned somewhere that it's going to give your opponent a relatively short charge so they don't even want to use those depravity dice on charges um but by doing it that way you're also like you're more in control of the board because you're putting your units where you want them to bait your opponent's charges or to screen them out keep them away from where you want to be so I think my my underlying point here is that you really can mitigate the risk associated with giving your opponent depravity dice at, for purposes of making charges just by being very mindful of your board position, just positioning well on the board, and making it so that your opponent doesn't get value out of it and force them to use those depravity dice either on nothing or on things that are not that valuable to them so that it ends up kind of being a waste. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think that's um, a pretty good general summary of all of this. Um, I think this ability is just good. Um, and that ability that temptation that you give to your opponent, I think a lot of times it's going to end up being a greater actual risk to your opponent than for the, like the value that they're potentially going to get out of it. So um, I really, I like the ability both thematically and in game. I, I, I think if, if you think about it this way, right? Say you go three depravity dice every round. Your opponent uses all three every time. So five battle rounds, it's going to be 15 depravity dice. A third of those are going to fail and do uh, mortal damage. So that is going to be uh, five times a game that your opponent is taking mortals from it. And you're going to average two on that. So just this mechanic, if you maximize it and your opponent maximizes it, you're going to do 10 mortal damage to your opponent on key units that they're trying to get something out of throughout the game that can't be warded. And that is in addition to giving your units uh, crit two hits giving your opponents uh giving your units uh potentially crit mortals if you get the spells off so i like this i think this is a good interesting ability i think you have to th this has a very high skill curve to it i think this is going to be way better for high skill players than it is going to be for your average player it's going to be even better for players that even just have a lot of experience with this play slanesh all the time and it'll become a non-issue really because you just end up knowing what to do um i think um the the risk 
that your opponent is taking, I think, is going to be underestimated a lot. They're going to feel like, oh, I've got this like guaranteed 12 inch charge. I've got this, you know, guaranteed wound roll or save roll. And then they forget basically that they have a one in three shot of blowing it. And then they, you know, they, you, know you do it on the, the wrong thing and you're going to cripple your unit. Maybe it's like a hero or a monster that just gets taken down completely by it. Um, you know, it, it it can uh, really throw a big monkey wrench in your opponent's uh, game plans because it it feels like it's supposed to be a guarantee, but it is far from that. So um, I'm going to call that there. I think uh, overall, uh, one of the biggest parts of this is going to be the psychology game with your opponent. Anyway, that's going to be it. I'll talk to you guys later.